Okay, this is part two of the intro to Pattern Tool. We're going to recolor, we're going to add some backgrounds, we're going to resize, recrop them, then we're going to set it up with single repeat and in repeat, and we're going to label and save them and for submission of this assignment. Now you can bring up your um, custom palette if you want. You would just go to the side of your swatch palette and say open swatch library other library and remember it takes you to the Adobe folder you would have to go find your path okay and it opens up separate just like this now I don't have a lot of colors but I can play with lights and darks and things like that so there is my original okay I can get rid of this and I go here and find my pattern one straight Okay, looks just the same, and I look at it. The layout pal, the layer palette is very important. You see the background where you have unstroke unfilled at the very bottom. Control C, Control F. Okay, in the second from the bottom, you can put a color in there. Okay, then you can pick your you can pick your star you actually could make your petals all different colors if you want but we'll pick the star and we'll grab a blue and there you are now we want to maybe make this a little smaller we have the constraints on and we make the biggest side a half an inch okay so we kind of resize this we have it right here we recolored it we put a background on and we drop it in. Now we make a swatch. Okay, right there. And we drop this in. And there's our first one is done, pattern one. Okay, now we look for pattern two. Okay, there's pattern two. We have the space around it. We can look on our palette again. Okay, if you want, you can recolor it the same way. You can first recolor this, or you can play with the tones a little. We'll grab this dark color, and we'll click here, and we'll make it a little lighter, like this. Okay, now we grab the background, unstroke, unfilled. You always have to have that in the background. Control C, Control F, that means paste in front. We put a color on that, okay. And now it looks kind of big. Okay, we want to make it smaller, so I'll take my biggest measurement and make it an inch. Okay, this one still is bigger than an inch, so I'll make this an inch. And then we drop, drag and drop it in. Okay, I move this swatch here. We get the rectangle. And we fill it with the next one. Okay, now I want to see more of these. So what can I do? Well, I can right click, I can go to Transform, Scale, take off the objects, only leave the patterns and the strokes and effects, and make it 50%. And then I can see more of these. Okay, now I look for three. Here's three. Okay, now three is a little different. If you look at three, look at it on the layer palette. Okay, here's the background. This is actually the single repeat. We have more than what we need, so we have to crop this. So we take Control C, Control F. We have two unstroke unfilled in the back. We make one more, Control C, Control F and we move it to the front. You have to have one to, in the front if you're going to crop it. Okay, so in the back we're going to put a, a color on in the back. Okay, and we're going to select, we can select first all of the blue and I think I'll take the same color okay and I'll make it lighter like that and then I'll select the one in the center and I'll make it even lighter 
like that. Now we have to crop it. So in order to do that, we grab everything, see, on the layer palette, and we go to the Pathfinder, and we crop. Okay, now we have to resize it. So we put it here, we look at the transform, make sure our constraint's on, and we want nothing over an inch for this exercise, there. So now we drag and drop this in, okay, and we set up our rectangle, and we put this one in, and here's this example. Okay, so we have three done, so now we look for four. Here is four, okay, this one too is going to need some cropping. So we look at this on the layer palette. We find you can do all the colors first here. Grab these colors. Okay, and select one of the colors here. The unstroke unfilled, I'm sorry, in the back and make control C, control F. This is where a color will be. We can select the same color in there and go here and make it very light. Okay, now we can't duplicate this one if we want it in the front. We go back to the back, control C, control F, and we move this all the way to the top. The one on the top has to be unstroked, unfilled, just like this. So now we're ready. If you're going to crop something, you have to have an unstroked, unfilled lines on the top, okay, the box. And if you're going to make a pattern, you have to have an unstroked, unfilled box rectangle on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to crop this. Pathfinder, crop. Okay, so now we've got to make it smaller. So we go to Transform, we readjust the size. We have it constrained, and we have nothing over an inch, okay, just so we can see it. And we drag and drop it in. So we have this here, and we make a swatch here. And we fill it. There we are. So that was four, so now we're ready for five. So hunt down here, five. Here's five. Okay, so it's over here. We look at it. We can go to the back first. Control C, Control F. Control C, Control F. Take that last one, move it to the front, unstroke, unfilled. Take the second from the bottom and put some sort of a color on it. Okay and then take your take your blue flower petals and put something on those okay now we have to crop it grab everything and pathfinder crop okay now look at your size nothing over an inch which i don't have so I can drag and drop this in. Okay, make a swatch palette. And put your last one in. Now you can never drag and drop things into the palette that you opened, your custom one. You have to drag and drop it into the palette that is part of this document. Okay, now we're going to look for six. Six, here it is. Find it here, go to your background, Control C, Control F, Control C, Control F, put one in the front because this needs to be cropped, put a background in, okay, and I think I'll make this darker. Okay, grab your, now you can color these different. I'm just going to color them all the same. Okay, so here they are, and I'll make them lighter. 
All right, now I grab everything to crop it. And I say Pathfinder Crop. Now I have to transform nothing bigger than an inch for this assignment. Okay, adjust it here. And drag and drop it in. And make a swatch palette. And put your color in. Okay, so now we're going to label things. Okay, the first is we're going to go to the front of our layout. This is our original motif. Okay, so there's the first one. And then this is our straight repeat. Okay, you can copy this one and move it right here. And then you right away can add with space. Okay, and then your third one. Your third one is brick repeat row. Okay, I have straight repeat with space. Over here I have brick repeat row in crust. Over here I have brick repeat column in crust. I think this was two-thirds, the row was one-half. Okay, the next one is hex uh, column and then hex row. And then hex row. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make these swatches look like the edges are pinked, like with pinking shears. That's a nice effect. You can select all of them. One, the, the swatches in repeat, not the single. Okay, try to get all of them. Okay, then go up to Effect, Distort, Zigzag, and Preview. Okay, and ridges per segment increase them okay and make the size small so it you know it fits so they're just a slight edge okay and you decide if the points are smooth kind of curvy or very pointy all right so i say okay and I, I guess I missed this one, so I can go up and apply zigzag. So I've got it on all of them. So now this is this assignment is done. We have to save it and hand it in. So you would go File, Save As, and you would save it as an AI. Okay, Pattern Tool, Example 1, your last name, AI, Save. Remember it has to be RGB color mode and make sure create PDF compatible is checked and if you are using something other than CS6 always save it in the CS the lowest one that you normally use because otherwise you won't be able to open those CS6 files up okay if all you're going to be using is CS6 then you save it as a CX6 if you use CX5 and 6, always save it as a CX5. So I'm going to use, save this as a CX6, PDF compatible, and then it's ready to submit. Remember, your document color has to be RGB. Okay, this part's done.